Okay, good evening everyone. So Alba Mineral Resources, this is our disclaimer, we have to put out of course. A little note about our competent persons um, and a snapshot about us. A bit envious about um, Hayden who's already left because he's very busy. Um, it's a, obviously a fantastic project but I'm envious also because he's got one project to talk about and we've got several at Alba. So in terms of investor interest we've certainly got that and uh, and news flow. So in terms of uh, what we are, we're quite unusual as a junior miner, we're a mining exp exploration company, uh, that's how we started, but then we got into oil and gas investment. So we've now got a suite of mining assets that we control and we've got a couple of investments in the UK onshore oil sector. We like to think that we've targeted some really good assets, we've got high grade assets like our ilmenite which we'll come to, our graphite is exceptionally high grade, We've got high value metals up in northwest Greenland. We're in Greenland in a big way, which I'll explain a little bit more about. We've got a high grade mine, the UK's largest ever uh, producer of gold, the Clogai Gold Mine, uh, which we control. And uh, we're about to start drilling in Ireland. So that's uh, a pretty busy roster of projects. So that's where we operate from. So you'll see in Greenland we've got uh, four main projects. There's three in a cluster up in northwest Greenland and one down in the tip of southern Greenland, which is actually on the same latitude as the Shetland Islands. So if you think of it that way, Greenland is an absolutely massive country, of course, but certainly down there in the southern Greenland, you know, we can work pretty much year, year in, year out and, uh, and uh, in, throughout the seasons. I thought I'd touch first on our Clog Eye Gold project because it's been in the news recently. So we announced um, some really good results in our regional exploration work that we've been doing in the Dolgethli Gold Belt. This is a unique story. Um, we've got most of the Gold Belt, the Dolgethli Gold Belt, under license to Alba. Um, if this was in West Africa, where I've done some work in the past, you'd, have, you'd see 20 or 30 companies owning little pieces of this and trying to sell their project as being the best bit of the Gold Belt. Well. Apart from one little bit in the middle, which is owned by the owners of the Gwynfinneth mine, we own the gold belt. I shouldn't say that if the Crown's listening. We're under licence from the Crown Mineral, Mineral Estate. So, but we have an exclusive licence over this 30 kilometre gold belt. It's a known geological formation. We know and have plotted over 300 gold occurrences and trial workings over time. There is only one, well, sorry, there were two mines in production. We have the Clog Eye Gold Mine within our license. Uh, we think there's a very good chance that there are other Clog Eye Gold Mines, in other words, other significant deposits of gold that have never been worked before, never been found before. We like this project as well because it has, it's unique in its, uh, in its connections to the royal family, it's in connections to the heritage of Wales in particular, but the UK as well. Um, it attracts a significant premium over normal spot rates. We like to talk about a two to three times premium uh, because of its scarcity value and because it has that cachet of being Welsh gold and the royal connection. What we're doing at Clog Eye is um, some mine redevelopment. So there's a very, very extensive um, workings underground. So in this um, here, you'll see two main adits. So the upper adit here is the Tinny Cornell in red and then down here, the, the Lech Freyth. These are really significant uh, development. There's many, many levels here that you can see. Some of that's been worked out, of course, but all the old timers were doing was essentially following the vein. This is a narrow vein gold deposit, and they were just chiseling it out, seeing, it, seeing the vein, following it as they go. And we like to think we can do a lot more than that. Uh, we've gone in and done some very systematic things. Some modern exploration has been employed here, we've done underground scanning, We've been doing the regional exploration, which I'll come to. And, uh, and, and obviously what we're trying to do here is unlock the unworked veins of gold that we think do exist. But typically they're randomly distributed. So this isn't going to be a drill it out and get a jork resource. This is gonna be do clever things to go and find the gold that we think is still in that mine. And at the same time, go into the regional uh, exploration in, in a big way. So talking of region exploration, uh, we've been doing a lot of very, what I guess would look like very mundane work. So just soil sampling over a grid, effectively over uh, a grid pattern uh, of many miles. We've covered up four miles now, the Dolgethlite Gold Belt in three months. 
and um, we've been taking soil samples and what we're trying to find there is whether we can see gold in the soil. So we send the soils off to the lab and they tell us pretty much um, uh, uniformly there is gold throughout those four miles that we've so far tested there is and we're only looking for low detection limits of gold here we're not talking about the stuff that we really want to mine that's underneath in the in the formation itself but we are finding as I say uh, uh, consistent decent grades of low-level anomalism um, so this was what we did in 2018 we started doing this uh, regional work and then this year we've really gone into it in a big way so the 2018 work were these red lines here where we were basically going over the old mine and we thought well if we can do the soil sampling over the old mine and we don't find gold there's something wrong right but we obviously did find gold because it's over the mine and you'd expect to find gold in the soil so we said okay well this is working so now we've been rolling this out to some of the rest of the gold belt and all these yellow lines here and consistently we're finding gold in the soil and, and, and this isn't a surprise this is a gold belt right so if we didn't find gold in the soil we'd be very surprised but what we're uh, finding I'll come to the next slide before I talk about this one what we found so far is a correlation of these results so the red the red uh, areas here are over mine working so these, this is the anomalism these are the results we've found over the old mine workings that we know about uh, so again that's not surprising what is surprising and nice very nice <coughs> is that we found five and these are the yellow targets here five areas where we're seeing consistent gold grades and these are definite targets for gold and these do not coincide with known historical mine workings so I think so far we're pretty excited we've only scratched the surface uh, really we've done four miles we're, we're in the field as we speak we're carrying on uh, we're going to hopefully cover at least 50 uh, percent of the 30k gold belt by the end of this year there's lots more results coming out like this we hope certainly the soil samples just keep getting sent to the labs and we'll be sending out um, updates on how we're going so um, <clears throat> it's pretty exciting as I say and it's a pretty unique story but um, having spent about 10 minutes on that I think I should probably move on um, we're about to go drilling in Limerick so we've had this project for some time before my time actually it's been in Alba for a, a long time it, Alba was listed uh, with the Irish and Scottish uh, exploration licenses and this is the one that we've got remaining we are surrounded uh, in this area this is us here we're surrounded by very active explorers who do a lot of drilling and getting some very nice uh, results this is a zinc lead district this is a world famous world class zinc lead district some very big deposits here Europe's largest zinc deposit Tara um, these are all mines uh, Lachine, Galmoy these are all closed mines admittedly but they were all in production very high grades 10 percent 15 percent zinc uh, what we think is uh, that uh, we've got at least five targets at Limerick that we want to drill we may not get to all of them this time round we had our consultants who are very experienced in Ireland look at our ground when we were deciding what to do here because it wasn't a tier one asset it was a tier two or tier three asset we thought and our consultants who are very experienced in in this ore field in, in Limerick were amazed that it only ever had five drill holes put down on this ground I mean given where it is it's a strategic location um, and they just were astounded so they've come up with at least five targets there that we uh, are high priority targets for drilling we're just waiting on a water discharge permit from the council such is life as soon as we get that we'll be in and, and start drilling uh, the next thing to talk about really is Greenland so if you don't know Greenland for mining uh, it's got some pretty big projects it's got a very supportive uh, mines department and uh, we've certainly found that all, the, all along I mean we, we got involved about four years ago with our graphite project and since then we've built uh, we've looked for other projects in Greenland where there's an opportunity and we've built on that foothold that we started with and now we've got a significant foothold we're, we're one of the key explorers in Greenland and we're doing proper work here we're not sitting on assets and in Greenland in fact you've got to use it or lose it so it encourages people like us to, to do work and keep going or give it up if you don't think it's going to work 
The, um, uh, Nigel alluded to this. Uh, this uh, presentation, is unfortunately, is already out of date as of 3.55 p.m. today because we put out an announcement on our Tule Black Sands deposit. Now, this is our very high-grade ilmenite deposit uh, in northwest Greenland. Uh, it's next door to a uh, project that a lot of you will know, uh, which is the Dundas project owned by Blue Jay Mining, who've done phenomenal work. They've got a 100 million ton uh, resource uh, before 3.55. Today, we didn't have a resource, at least we hadn't announced one. Uh, we now have a resource, a Jork resource on our ground as well, and we'll come to that. Uh, why is uh, ilmenite important? Because it's the primary source of titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is a whitening pigment in pa paints and coatings and plastics. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar market. It's a huge market and it is growing uh, because of expansion in places like China and India. So this is where we are, the blue dot there. Um, and just south of us, Moriusak, that's where um, Blue Jay are located. And they've obviously been working on their project three years longer than us. We've only been in the field done one full field season um, uh, and one mini field season when we first got the license granted and last year basically what we did was we did drilling we went drilling and we drilled these targets this is this is beach sands okay so this is on the beach you are walking on it the high grade stuff is on the beach i've got some in my bag i can show you later it's nice stuff um, it's highly it's heavy heavy minerals highly mineralized Behind the beaches you have uh, effectively what I guess what you and I would think of as sand dunes. They're large terraces and they also contain ilmenite. They're very large terraces. You can see one in that picture there in the background. That also contains ilmenite. So we've drilled both the active beaches as we call them and the raised terraces behind. And we've confirmed we've got 10 kilometers of mineralized strike on our license area. And um, we had an independent competent person visit because we wanted to get a resource out of this work and we've now got a resource. So uh, before I move on, just to explain that, I mean, it's in our announcement, it's not in our presentation, but we have announced an inferred resource of 19 million tonnes, 43.6% total heavy mineral. And of the heavy mineral, the only interesting mineral for us is the ilmenite, and that's about 20.5% of that total heavy mineral. We've got contained ilmenite, in our resource of 1.7 million tonnes. Um, so if you think of this as a sort of, if you think of it, and I know Mike, my fellow director, thinks this is an extraordinary figure, but if you were to mine 3 million tonnes per annum, you're looking already, we've got uh, more than a six year mine life on that basis. This is only an inferred resource, but it is, you know, you see it, you, you, you can see it, you can pick it up in your hands, you know, for us to move from inferred into the uh, other categories is certainly something that we'll be looking to do next. So that's, um, I'm pretty excited about that. We have only had that project two years and we've got a, a Jork resource. And I think uh, even just that project significantly undervalues Alba. Amitsok is our high grade graphite project that we started with in Greenland. I say high grade, it's averaging 28% total graphitic carbon. I'm not, not sure of any other project in the world. Admittedly, this is not Jork yet but I don't know of any other project in the world, a graphite project that averages 28% graphite. It's, the, it's, a, it's phenomenally high grade. It's flake graphite. It was mined 100 years ago, a bit like clog eye. We're always looking for opportunities where we know there has been mining. We know it's been successful in the past, but we think there's a lot more, and we know there's a lot more graphite there. It was uh, very small scale mining 100 years ago, but we know it, it was done, and we know that we can build on that. So we're going drilling there as well this summer. And the idea there, I mean, if I have to explain what graphite is uh, for, it has traditional uses, but the key driver at the moment and will be for years to come is its, its, its use in, electric, in the electric vehicle sector. So it is the anode material in a lithium ion battery. And you know, everything we see nowadays, I was trying to buy a, a, a lawnmower the other day and suddenly I'm seeing that you can buy lawnmowers that are cordless. I had no idea. You know, the explosion in, in these devices is, is ma massive already and is only going to get bigger. So at the moment, and certainly for the foreseeable, there is no substitution for graphite, or effective substitution for graphite in a lithium-ion battery in the, anode, in the anode part. 
So as I say, we're going to go drilling. We've done a lot of mapping here. We've done a lot of sampling. We've done airborne electromagnetics. We've done the work. So the only thing we haven't done is to drill it to know how much graphite there is there. So we're going to be drilling Amitsok, which is on the right hand side there. That's the mine, the former mine. And those dots there are some of the targets for drilling. Uh, the idea is certainly to confirm the structure that we believe is there and hopefully to get an initial resource out of the drilling this summer as well. We found the new discovery of graphite that no one knew about on our mainland part of our license called Kalak. You know, that's one of the beauties of it doing exploration. It, it was not known before. This is a, another significant deposit on our license, but that'll be a phase two drilling uh, program. Uh, how long have I got, Nigel? A few minutes. So I won't say much about Englefield. It's up in northwest Greenland. It's early stage exploration. It's very, very interesting. It's got all sorts of mineralization. If you have heard about the, um, uh, the Hiawatha Glacier, uh, there's a, an impact crater that was found. It was announced a few months ago on the BBC and, and other news networks. And um, we're right next door to that. So actually, if you see, this is the impact crater here. And these are our licenses. It's, anyway, it's a fascinating part of the world. There's a lot of science going on and, at the moment, and we're talking to them about collaborating with, this, with the scientific groups that are doing work up there. Uh, there's a lot of mineralization. We've had a lot of people, uh, e experts in the field, look at it over the winter months. We went out and did some work last year on the field. What they're saying is some of this, what we're seeing is gold, copper, silver, molybdenum. Now, those, that assemblage of minerals is typical of a porphyry copper or an IOCG style deposit. These are very large deposits, typically modest grades, which is what we've found. You know, we found decent but pretty modest grades, but what we're looking for is a large mineralized system. So we're pretty excited about Englefield. It's had a lot of work in the past done, but we're trying to bring all that work together. We're going out in the field again this summer. Um, what we want to try and get out of this season is early stage exploration is uh, some targets for drilling next year. Bailey got a minute to speak about our oil and gas. Um, a lot of people like Alba for our oil and gas investments and our, our investments in the Weald Basin. We are the second largest holder in the Horse Hill Developments Consortium. We've increased our stake at Horse Hill over the last four years from 5% up to 18% of the operator. We've now got 11.7% of the project. Uh, we put a lot of money into it. Um, we've seen great uh, uh, success and great progress. We're still testing it. We're still producing oil. Uh, we started in June of last year with the extended well tests at Horse Hill, and they are ongoing, uh, which is a lot longer than I thought they'd go on for. Um, we've declared the Portland commercially viable, which is the sandstone, which we knew was a producer from other projects in the area. We've also gone in and tested the Kimmeridge, which we are hoping is going to be the big pay zone. And again, that has produced oil, uh, significant oil, day in, day out. And we've had so far about 40,000 plus barrels of oil aggregate in aggregate from both layers uh, since we started last June. So it's going pretty well. Uh, there's a big plan to go and do some more drilling, I know, uh, from the operator this, uh, later this year to try and increase the number of barrels that we can tap. And, uh, and probably no time to talk about Brockham. We've got a 5% interest there. It's next to Horse Hill. And uh, we're hoping that uh, Angus will, uh, will uh, be able to fix the problem that has arisen with the water injection, uh, water in, inflow there. Just brief uh, finish up. Uh, what are our value drivers? It says there that we've got one Jork compliant resource. We've got to scrub that. We've got two Jork compliant resources as of uh, this afternoon. We're looking at a further one by the end of the, the year, if we can, at Amitsok. Uh, we've got historic production in our assets. Uh, so we're looking at near-term revenues, both on our oil, on our, on our gold, which we want to get back into production, and on our ilmenite. Uh, we've got 30 kilometers of a, of a gold belt under license. So I think we're a pretty unique story. We do have a lot on, uh, but there will be a lot of news flow to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, an awful lot of different uh, projects. You may have uh, questions or thoughts, so uh, one <coughs> over here. In relation to the geography of where you are, do you have a preference of being in the Northern Hemisphere, or are you prepared to look elsewhere for the resources that you're looking for? Are you prepared to go into South America, South Africa, or other jurisdictions? 
we're, we're always prepared to look at everything. I mean, we, we, we see projects day in, day out that come across our desks. We will always look at them. But we have, we have sort of found ourselves in this, I wouldn't call it much of a niche, I suppose, geogra geographically, but we are in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm. We're in Europe, Northern Europe per se. I suppose Greenland in some respects is uh, part of Northern Europe, certainly was part of the EU until the, recently they were the last people to Brexit. So there you go, or Grexit. Um, so... Um, so yeah, so we, we, we like where we're, where, where, where we're operating from. They are safe jurisdictions, they're stable jurisdictions, they've got very sophisticated mining codes. Um, Ireland, have got a lot of work going on, a lot of uh, mineral exploration in Ireland. Obviously the UK sector, we know it well. We know that the regulatory burden in the UK is relatively high, because we know that from our oil and gas experience. So, but you know, that's fine. We know what we're dealing with and we know mm. the hurdles we have to overcome. We have to get planning at Clog Eye. But it was a mine. It was in, it had planning. There's no reason why it can't have planning permission again. So these are the things that we work with. But at least we know what the hurdles are that we've got to, you know, overcome. And Greenland is the same. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a very friendly jurisdiction. We've got a case officer who, who deals with us whenever we've got a problem. We don't understand something. We talk it through. We work it out. And so, you know, in that respect, you know, these are good places to operate. So I would certainly look elsewhere, sure, but I want to look for somewhere where I, I feel we can operate. I mean, because of your exposure currently, would you be looking to <coughs> consolidate what you have or would you be aggressively trying to grow another portfolio somewhere else? No, I think we, we've got to grow what we've got. I mean, we've got some, I think we've got a phenomenal set of assets. I don't think we can do them all justice, that's for sure. So at some point, maybe soon, we will need to look at what we focus on. Uh, so far it's worked, okay? So we have juggled a little bit. We are gonna juggle a bit more this year in terms of Greenland. We're gonna be going into Amitsok. We haven't been able to go into Amitsok in a big way for a couple of years. You're gonna need partners. We may need partners. We may, we may want partners on one or more of these projects. So we, 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 we maintain a very open mind about how to unlock value for shareholders. You know, we found that this coastline up in northwest Greenland, apart from the Blue Jays uh, section of coastline, was, uh, was not under licence. You know, we're always looking for opportunities. For the cost of a £2,000 licence, we've now got a jolt resource that I think is worth a lot more than that. Right. So this is what we try to do. We're trying to unlock value for our shareholders by just trying to think outside the box, find projects that are undervalued, maybe got past production, uh, something that something that's tangible that we can work with. So, but for sure, you know, we'll we'll be open to opportunities to work with other partners who are in graphite or who are in um, polymetallic uh, the polymetallic sector, like you know, our Inglefield project. We'll definitely be open to to looking at those things, and we are looking at them. A lot of companies are run by engineers, natural resource. <coughs> yeah. uh, uh, sort of career professionals if you like your background was in law your yeah. expertise is in strategic planning and management and, and all that kind of thing do you are you kind of at the mercy of engineers saying it's going to come right next week next month next year or does that actually help you with the background you've got yeah no I, I, I mean I think I've got a quite a good sort of jack of all trades type of background I mean I've been in mining for 10 years though so um, I'm more a miner now, in inverted commas, than I am a lawyer. Gone native. Um, but yeah, I've gone native, but at least, I mean, I know enough to make myself dangerous. I mean, Mike is uh, sitting in front of me, he's 40 years a, a, a geologist, uh, and, uh, you know, he can tell a few war stories. So we've got a very good, very experienced board. Mike was our ex-CEO, he's still on our board as our senior non-exec. Um, so we've got a lot of grey hairs, unfortunately I've got it as well. And um, so I think we've got a good mix. We've got, we've got geologists, we've got mining engineers, we've got, bank, we've got Manuel, who's our banker, non-executive director. Um, so I think the mix is quite good. Any more questions for Albert? Yeah. Uh, just quickly, your budget and the amount of uh, meterage to drill on Limerick. Uh, we're only going to be doing a short program at Limerick. This uh, we're doing about um, 503 to 500 meters of drilling. Uh, it's a short program to hit two or three of those targets that I mentioned, and then we'll go again. We'll see how it goes. Of course, if it goes well, we'll see it immediately, and we might carry on. Um, but um, the program for the moment is a short program. It puts our license in good standing, and then we'll see where we where we go from there. Uh, the budget is uh, 50,000 euros. I mean, it's, that's the beauty of Ireland is uh, drilling is uh, 
relatively inexpensive. And environmental issues you particularly have to deal with? I mean, can you just dig up the beach in Greenland? Is that all right? No, no. I mean, it is all right. In, in essence, it is all right. But of course, there is uh, an environmental piece. Um, so we work with the Environment Agency as well as we work with the Mines Department in Greenland. We will have to do an EIA. We did it at first year environmental baseline study. So we were thinking ahead last year. I mean, we, we didn't have the resource. We took in a team of environmental consultants to do that first year baseline study. So that, that plus an extra, another year will give us our baseline to then move into doing the EIA work. So it's the same in Clogger. You know, when we put our planning permission in, we'll need to put in an environmental impact assessment with it. And all that work has been going on now for about a year. So we're, we're well advanced uh, and, and we, 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 we know that that's part of the, um, the territory. One at the front here. And then you've got a question. No. <laughs> With your um, Tula Black Sands project, uh, assuming it goes into commercial production at some stage, would you see that being a year-round operation due to the climate or would it be restricted to summer only? No, we've looked at that. I mean, OK, so we've, we've sort of scratched the surface a little bit on development, but we've had a little look at it. We've had some people look at that for us. We do think we can probably operate there about nine months a year. Um, you need winterized um, uh, operations, so you need to have the right kit, obviously, for what is an extreme temperature, of course, in, in the winter months. Um, it's quite nice and sunny and blue skies sometimes in the summer months, but obviously there are extremes of temperature. So, but a winterized operation certainly is possible, and we, under, we believe for eight to nine months a year. Thank you. And over here. So I'm giving you the run around. <laughs> Sorry, you've got. Um, <laughs> You're beginning to tire. You've got several interesting projects you're working on, <clears throat> um, all of which are presumably going to drain cash. Um, how soon before you run out and need to get some more? And at, what, at that point, how much are you going to need to raise? Well, I think it depends on what, what our plans are, and we've always cut our cloth according to what the money we, what the money we've got. Um, so, you know, that's why, as I said, this year we'll be concentrating on carrying on work at Clogger, which is relatively inexpensive. I mean, just to explain, we've done three months of regional exploration. We've done that with three graduates and one senior geologist looking, overseeing them, essentially. Um, so, you know, we always try to do these things at a modest cost, and that has come in at a remarkably modest budget really for the work we've done three months and these five gold targets that we've come up with. So are they on a bonus? Sorry? If they find more gold, are they on a, a bonus? I think a beer bonus perhaps, oh, okay. yeah, a beer bonus. Um, so, you know, we're, but, you know, so some of the things we do aren't as expensive as you might imagine, right? Now, of course, going drilling at, uh, in Greenland and Amitsok is going to be a fairly expensive exercise, but it's worth it. If it wasn't the highest grade graphite that I know of, we'd think, we'd think twice about it, but it is and it's worth drilling, it's worth getting a resource and, and proving up the model that we think is there. So yes, we'll have to, we'll either have to raise again at some point, because that's what we do, we're in a mineral exploration business, we are explorers, we're pre-revenue, we may not be pre-revenue if Brockham goes into production, we won't be pre-revenue when Horse Hill goes into full-scale production, um, and we certainly won't be when Clog Eye goes into production. So we've got some assets that we think are near term, that will provide that, that cash flow. We'd have hoped that the oil would have done so by now, to be honest. And it's, it's, a bit, you know, it's a bit behind, it's a bit tardy in terms of where we thought the oil projects would be by now. But they're still, you know, we, we, we still believe in, in their ability to bring us <coughs> cash flow. But until we get real cash flow, of course, we're gonna to have to continue to, to look to our you know, investors and, and, and existing investors in particular and, and uh, you know, Tap the market, right. the alternative. We'll tap them, rights issue, something the, like that. The alternative, well, yeah, it would be nice to sort of allow shareholders to participate if you can. It's sometimes a little bit tricky to, to do rights issues, certainly expensive to do rights issues. But the other thing that I definitely want to look at in, in trying to be nimble and trying not to have to tap the market is joint ventures and farm outs of interest. We've got a lot of projects here and we think that um, all of them really should be of interest to potential partners. We may not want to partner with some of them, um, because we want to sole, sole uh, operate, but one or two of them certainly I think are ripe for a, a joint venture.
and uh, that would then take the funding equation out of the out of the out of the issue for us. So I think that's definitely something that I'm working on. Um, I'd like to see that come to fruition, and then we wouldn't have to tap the market. So we'll just have to see. Okay, we're well, running out of time. We've got one more question, I think, over here. Okay, um, um, hello. Um, in terms of Horse Hill, um, just a quick question. In terms of uh, what sort of uh, estimate do you, do you feel uh, it potentially in terms of recoverable volumes? Um, and also, um, do you have any, uh, in terms of uh, when proper field development will take place after all the um, uh, uh, so sort of your normal flow test mm. and um, any spaces for uh, farmings and farm out in the near future on those projects on the oil yes right. um, on yes. Well, I mean if we just quickly just look here I mean the the reserves um, you know, there's a 32 million uh, barrels at the Portland, which was an exodus in the exodus CPR. The Kimbridge is, a, is an estimate, uh, it's a huge estimate from Slumberger of uh, 10 billion barrels. That's unconventional uh, limestones and shale. So, the, you know, the reservoir is potentially massive. These, these are not banked or jork or, sorry, not more compliant resources in oil and gas terms. Um, but the potential reservoir is massive and that's what that's what's exciting about the Kimmeridge in particular. Um, I think in terms of recoverability um, you know we're seeing you know we're, I think that we're talking about eight percent maybe 14 percent with water injection those are the sorts of figures that I think that we're looking at and um, so far we're not seeing much depletion or much evidence of depletion at all and we've been we've been testing now as I say for what uh, nine months so I think that's a very good sign indeed. So uh, in terms of farming's farms out, farm outs, um, for us, I mean, we're, you know, we're <coughs> heavily invested in, in Horse Hill. Um, I know there's a plan, obviously, to go and drill at least a couple of wells. Whether we participate in that is a decision that we'll make at the time when we're asked to make a decision on it. That's a politician's answer. <laughs> Well, seems a good note to end, so thank you very much indeed uh, to George. Thank you, Steve. <laughs>